sorry back out okay so um I spoke to a couple people that I play often with uh Chanty aka Tim Kaiwin and my well my friends Kaiwin my friend friend Jack and they all pretty much agree that my wizard deck at the moment is a bit too slow um I tested it out against a engineering the future fast advance and it did come through well not I shouldn't say come through it caught up in the end but it's just a hair too slow to play against engineering the future fast advance or um engineering the future fast advance or NBN rush so the changes that we sort of discussed were to swap out Desperado for Grimoire and so the reason for that is if we look if we look oh wrong deck dun, 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 oh, here okay so if we look here Desperado um, gives me plus one memory and I gain a credit whenever I make a successful run and that's that's great but for those who've seen the deck it makes a lot of money anyways to the point where I can just blow money on vamps whenever I feel like it I shouldn't say whenever I feel like it but often enough so by having by getting rid of that one credit and increasing the memory to something to a, a console with higher memory it speeds up the deck because in order for me to get where is it in order for me to get Morningstar out actually no I'll look at it here because these cards are bigger so I get again my deck revolves around Morningstar and so for me to get Morningstar out it's two memory okay and in Netrunner as you are all pretty much aware you start off with having a four memory capacity so Morningstar takes two. The other breaker I was using is Mimic, which takes one, and finally Yog, which takes one. So that's a total of four. Okay. So yeah, two, three, four. Right. But the issue there is that each of those three breakers are static. They can't increase their strength. Right? So yes, they're all great if I run into a piece of ice with Yog, that's three. Or if I run into a sentry that is three, and then Morningstar, I'm not even worried about for the most part because most barriers that it runs into are less than five. But there are still b uh, barriers like Wall of Thorns and Heimdalls which are above five. So I need to have enough memory to run Data Sucker, which is an additional memory. So that's five already. Um, because data sucker is important, I need to get uh, rolling on the central servers early enough so that I can use data sucker to lower the strength of whatever ice I run into to make it low enough that my static breakers can break them. And so the issue that I was having, and the reason why the deck as it stands right now is so slow, is because one, Desperado only gives me plus one memory, so a total of five, so I could have. Um, I could have all my breakers out, all three breakers and a data sucker out, which is great, but I can't do that until I find Desperado. And only having two core sets means I only have two Desperados, and trying to find um, two cards in a deck of 45 isn't that reliable. So what I was doing was I put three gins in my deck so that Jin could host Data Sucker on it, and have that would be my other option of finding a card that that gives me more memory because Jin can host up to three memory worth of non Icebreaker programs such as Data Sucker, um, such as Keyhole, Key. Is it one word? So yeah, such as Keyhole, which takes up two, and I'm also running Hemorrhage. Hem there we go, Hemorrhage, which is one. So you see already that there's a massive issue in memory because I have to wait until I find the right cards, wait till I have enough money, wait till I get Desperado, and then put them out one by one. 
so I think that by having Grimoire, which is here, Grimoire, even though again I only have two of them, because I only have two core sets, at least when I get it out, it gives me plus two memory. So my options right off the bat are a lot more open. So I have a total of six memory to work with, which means I could put Morningstar out for two, have Mimic and Yaga out, that's uh, four, and then put a Data Sucker and Keyhole, sorry, a Data Sucker and um, Hemorrhage out, for example, without having to find Jin first. So that's the that was the first change. I don't know where I put that. Oh yeah, here it is. So that was the first change. One, because it gives me more memory, and two, because Grimoire is in faction, so I'm freeing up six influence to use elsewhere. And with that six influence, we talked about using cards like Quality Time. So that's one influence there. It's cost me three, but I get to draw five cards. So I'm getting through my deck quicker and seeing what I need. Um, so Quality Time was one option. Uh, the other one was Diesel. Diesel here, zero cost, draw three cards, two influence. So I could, I could pop some of those in. And then finally, Freelance Coding. Because once I get my breakers out, and often more often than not, I get duplicates in my hand anyways, I can use Freelance Coding to make money off of those extra cards that I have in my hand, especially after I use a diesel and draw, say, um, two copies of Yogg and two whatever have you that I don't need at the time, then I can just freelance them out, get rid of them from my hand for one, to get back down to the uh, hand cap, and two, I'm making money off of each one. And plus on top of that, because the deck focuses on retrieval runs, so I make a run on archives, if successful, instead of accessing cards, I may install a program from my heap. By me using freelance coding to toss all those programs into my heap, it's just giving me a lot quicker options when I do run um, when I do run archives and need to install something. Uh, on top of that, another card that I was using was Lucky Find. So this card is new. It came with the double time pack that just came out last week and basically I tossed it in because I thought Anarch needed it but after playing the past couple of games with the wizard deck I noticed I would draw this look at it and more often than not discard it or play it just for the sake of getting rid of a card in my hand so this is not something that I need I'd, I've, I've never actually had to use it for the sake of being low on money. Um, so that's another card that's going to come out, I believe. And I think so. That was one, two. That's getting switched. Dyson Fractal Generator is another card that people kind of hate on for me putting it in the deck, but since power shutdown pretty much runs rampant and I don't want to lose data sucker this is why I have that and it's just an added perk that I can use this when I'm using Morningstar to save a credit right but I'll, I'll definitely keep two of those um, and then the other thing was to try to get three copies each of each program just to help with the freelance economy um, when I do start drawing a lot of cards so there's a lot of stuff to toss around um and figure out which I'm hoping to do tonight. I can't do it right now because unfortunately I have to leave for a few hours. But I'm gonna try to get done later on tonight around ten, ten thirty, as I did yesterday. Uh one more thing that I had was Ice Carver. And the reason why I had Ice Carver I'll go back to the big image over here. Ice Carver. So the reason why I had Ice Carver in was because, again, the deck was very slow. And if I couldn't find Jin in time, and I, I knew that there was Ice Res that was just one strength above my Static Breakers, for example, RSVP, um, then Ice Carver's out, 
to reduce the strength by one, and then I can use my my breakers on those things until such time that I do get a data sucker out. But it's not something that is a hundred percent necessary now that I'm speeding up the deck and getting the card draw engine running a lot sooner. So that's another card that I'm I'm looking to take out, and especially because I only had one of it in the deck, anyways. Um, I think that's it. So, in a nutshell, it was two lucky finds are coming out. Both desperados are coming out, so that's freeing up six, ten influence. Wow. So that's freeing up ten influence, and with that influence, I'm planning to put in um, quality times, possibly diesel, and freelance coding contracts, and then desperado is getting swapped with uh, grimoires. Let's write that down before I forget. So swap lucky find for freelances. I wrote same money. I know it's not exactly the same, but it's good enough. Uh, insert quality time slash diesel. Insert quality time slash diesel. And I think that was it for the most part. Oh, the other thing was uh, Mimic, because I do have that extra influence, I was thinking of taking Mimic out and throwing in a card that everyone should be familiar with, Fems. One, because I can install Fem with a retrieval run. Two, because she's not static. If I need to spend the two credits which would suck, but if I needed to, I can um, boost her up two credits at a time. She breaks entries, and most importantly, for early game, I can use her to bypass ice um, in remote servers if the if my, if the corp gets brave enough to put down an agenda or something important behind just one piece of ice. Um, Fem can come out, deal with it, and by having freelance in, I can delete her at any time and retrieve her, and her back out and rehost her. It's kind of like a a ghetto version of of scavenge, a ghetto and more costly version of scavenge, but it works nonetheless. So mimic's gonna come out for her. I'm still gonna keep Yog. Um, it's just because I, I have all that extra influence now that I'm thinking of doing that. Plus, I still have Knight for early game, and then there's Hemorrhage. Hemorrhage, I'm not. I'm still not completely sold on. I like it. I'm just not sure if I like it for Wizard. So, and this will be the last one that I pull up again. So again, Hemorrhage. Whenever you make a successful run, place one virus counter on Hemorrhage. One click and two virus counters. The corp trashes one card from HQ. It is their choice, and because they're trashing it as their own choice, it's a card that gets trashed face down, not face up. But you're still forcing them to make decisions and get and get rid of things that they wanted to keep. Like I always say, if they end a turn with five cards in their hand, especially if they start their turn with six, that means those are five cards that they deemed worthy enough to keep. So by you forcing them to get rid of one of them, um, I always think that that's great. And Dancing Pigeon, I really need to get the chat, the chat uh, to show up in the window. But Dancing Pigeon says, I'm not sold on it either yet. I hate playing against it as a corp, but I'm still not sure if it's worth the money. And that's kind of where I'm at with this. Three credits to get it out. You gotta make two successful runs to pop it off. And realistically, in a game, when you're trying to keep the pressure on, how willing are you going to be to spend one of your precious clicks on trashing one card from HQ that the corp chooses over making a run and seeing a card in HQ. That's kind of my dilemma there. Would I rather see a card or let them choose and trash one card? But again, just having the token sitting on this thing could probably work probably work to um probably work to keep the pressure or keep the ball in the corpse court. Another option that I was thinking of instead of hemorrhage because I freed up so much influence 
was Chicana. I don't even know how you. I say Chicana. Some people say Chicana. Whatever. Chicana. Whenever you make a successful run on R&D, place one virus counter on Chicana. If there are at least three virus counters on Chicana, the advancement requirement of all agendas is increased by one. Now this is good and bad for the wizard, or my version of it, because once this hits three, especially if you're playing against fast advance slash rush, the corpse first instinct is going to be to spend a turn and clear all counters. And so in a deck that has a lot of static breakers and relies not heavily but still requires um, data suckers, late game if that were to happen, I would be pretty screwed if their central servers were blocked by ice that my static breakers couldn't beat. And then at that point I would have to mess around with memory and try to get night going to, to sort of uh, circumvent that problem. So I like this specifically for fast advance slash rush which is very dominant right now in the Netrunner meta. Uh, it's just do I want to run the risk of forcing the corp to clear counters which it's always good when the corp has to give up an entire turn and you still that's like that's like putting yourself two turns ahead but is it worth it to me to have to give up all of my counters and kind of on that same idea is one of the benefits of grimoire uh, which is whenever I install a virus it comes into play with a counter on it so I mean if that were to happen I could just install a data sucker it would come in with one counter on it already plus ice carver would be out so that's two free points of strength that I could take off of a single well of a single the first piece of ice and then if the second one is also out of range then I'd be screwed then but I feel like chances are that's not going to happen usually it's only one max two pieces of ice that you'd ever need to use data sucker on when making a run on a server because people really don't build that deep. Uh, Mr. Lovejoy says, why Chicana over the source? So here's the source. The advancement requirement of all agendas incre is increased by one. As an additional cost to steal an agenda, you must pay three. Trash the source when an agenda is scored or stolen. And so the reason why is right here. Yes, I said my deck has a lot of economy, but one, I don't know if I want to pay three credits to steal an agenda. And then the fact that this goes away right after kind of sucks. So even if the corp does get a chance to squeak out an agenda, this is gone. Two, and this is a big, a big two. It's very meta dependent. But since Double Time came out, the amount of people that are running this agenda here. Uh, oops this agenda here, NAPD contract. So if I were to run a, a server, I hit NAPD contract and I have this source out, not only am I paying to get through the server into to see this NAPD contract, then I'm going to have to pay four bucks plus the three from the source, seven, just to steal a single agenda. And that's going to set me back a lot. I think. And just today I, I, see, I saw people dumping these in archives. Which is a play that I probably wouldn't do myself. But I see people dumping these in archives. And when you make that archives run, thinking that you're going to get a, a nice free dirty laundry or steal some agendas, whatever have you, especially after a failed uh, accelerated beta test, for example, you're paying four, five, six, seven credits again with the source out to steal an NAPD contract of two points. And I think that's just a big momentum swing to give up that much to steal an agenda. Because then you set yourself back a turn and give the corp that little opening to go ahead and, and look for a score themselves. But I do see where you're, where you're coming from with the the source over Chicana. But again, Chicana gets to stay in play. 
the source leaves as soon as one agenda is scored. And again, the fact that I have to pay three bucks to steal one. Even if it wasn't NAPD, I still don't want to have to pay three dollars just to steal one. So I don't know. It's I guess it kind of depends on you. Um, I would rather spend my influence on a Chicana over the source again because the second reason is Chicana is a virus. Chicana is a virus, and because it's a virus, that means I could use Jin, spend a credit and a click, search for Chicana, and host it in two turns. Whereas the source, I'd only be able to fit maybe one of them in my deck and have to draw through and find it. Uh, Dancing Pigeon, you made me wonder an interesting thing with what you're saying. If the court, if the source was a corp card, would it be played? If the source was a corp card, like one of those, the new, uh, what are they called? Current cards? If the source was a current card, I definitely think it would be played. So, currents being a card that kind of stands alone at the side of the board until it gets removed. Um it would definitely be played because you could just combo it with, with NAPD, you could combo it with Fetal AI. Uh, there's, I don't know, just, there's just a bunch of different options that you could do with that. And yeah, so Mr. Lovejoy in the chat says, and this is again why I need to get the chat up on the screen, uh, oh, the virus surge from I c I've always called them Jin. I was just told it's just Din. <laughs> the virus search from Din is a very solid reason. Um, Acid Burn 1 says, does the source benefit you? I'm still confused. Yes, the source does benefit you as the runner because if you're playing against a fast advanced deck or a NBN rush deck, um, the corp is no longer able to biotic labor and score out of hand because they're going to need five clicks now to score out of hand instead of the four that Biotic Labor would give you. So it, it it is a card that throws them off, but until an agenda scored, or once an agenda scored, then this is gone. This gets trashed. Um, for Mr. Lovejoy, it was, no, sorry, not Mr. Lovejoy, Dancing Pigeon, who said that the source was a good card, it is still a good card, and you could combo it with another card that just came out in double time, which was uh, Fall Guy. So you could keep the source in if you're running Fall Guys. Whenever the source has to get trashed, you just trash Fall Guy instead, prevent another installed resource from being trashed. So this is kind of like if you play Game of Thrones, whenever you, you dupe, dupe a character to save it, um, this would essentially be a save for the resource. So you could keep it in the game if you were to find all three of your fall guys or if you just played one. You could keep it in for three different agenda steals. But just remember that the longer you keep it in, yes, the corp is going to have to spend extra money. Uh, sorry, have to, sp have to spend an extra advancement token. But for every agenda you steal, you're also spending an additional three credits instead of stealing it for free on top of the cost of getting into a server. I don't know if it's pronounced Jin or Din or whatever. I always say it said Jin because I thought the D was silent. But that's neither here or there, here or nor there. Um. So yeah, those are the changes that I, I want to make. I didn't realize there's so many people in the that are watching this right now, considering I'm not even playing a match. That's pretty cool. But yeah, I can definitely see where where that discussion would come up of why Chicana over the source. And Mr. Lovejoy said, fair enough, the more keyhole is used, the more the source is lovely. And going back, keyhole is one of the key cards in my deck. Um for anyone that's in the channel that is new that doesn't know what keyhole does, it's a pretty, I want to say, epic card. Cost four, memory cost two, 
again it's not a icebreaker so it can be hosted on Jin Din the Jin it can be hosted on him it's not a virus so you can't use Jin to, to search for it but once you do find it you put it on Jin doesn't cost you any memory um, for one click make a run on R&D if successful instead of accessing cards look at the top three cards of R&D trash one of those cards at no cost even if it cannot be normally even if it cannot normally be trashed and the corp shuffles R&D so this card is huge huge um, you're essentially making run if especially if R&D is open you're making runs and you're you're milling through the corpse deck and choosing what you want to toss so if you have um, the source out you could toss a bunch of agendas and once you access archives the first one you steal say you toss four agendas <laughs> the first one that you steal is uh, gonna cost you the additional three and the rest of them after that are gonna be free so if you combo your agenda your agenda theft with keyhole then you don't need to worry about the source I'm laughing every time I hear you say Din. I'm just gonna keep saying Jin. I'm just gonna keep saying Jin. Chozo Joe, good for trashing agendas too for later. Yes, it is, but it all depends. It all depends what the corp gives you, um, and the deck that you're playing. If you're playing noise, then yeah, that's great that you're trashing agendas too. But depending on, and this is this is my point of view, anyways. Depending what kind of deck the corp is playing, if I'm playing against HB, and uh, I make a keyhole run on say my second or third click, and I see that the corp has in its next three cards an agenda, such as um, an agenda such as accelerated beta test versus a card like biotic labor there is versus a card like biotic labor and I know that uh, it's going to be expensive to get into into archives and I don't want to run it on last click obviously I would trash biotic over the agenda why because that's taking away one of their crucial combo cards and two when the run with keyhole is over the corpse deck gets reshuffled so the agenda doesn't stay on top it gets reshuffled to wherever else in the deck and then you just keep milling them and milling them and milling them as the game goes on. Um, Dancing Pigeon says, too many times I've let someone get the agenda out of archives with archive memories slash Jackson. Always run the turn you hit one don't give them a chance to lock archives down. Ye I agree and I also disagree. The reason why I agree is yes you want to fish the agendas out as soon as possible um, but two I disagree because if they're gonna go ahead and burn Jackson Howard and still leave R&D relatively open then that's one Jackson out of the way and your keyhole runs are still gonna happen for the foreseeable future you're putting them behind because Jackson Howard is getting rid of their their draw engine Let me pop Jackson Howard up so Jackson Howard use a click to draw two cards or you remove him from the game to shuffle three cards from archives back into R&D so excuse me most people want to keep them out as long as possible because you want to be able to draw two cards right and if I toss three agendas into his archives and he feels the need to burn Jackson to get those out, that's great because that's one Jackson that's out of the game for good. And then I just keep milling his deck down and tossing the agendas out anyways. So uh, sometimes I don't mind. I just like having that pressure and forcing the corp to do things that they, they don't necessarily, excuse me, things that they don't necessarily want to do. Uh... He says, sure, but Keyhole is a pretty big sign to just make R&D runs expensive economically for the corp. Or I guess he meant for the runner. Yeah, but I also drop Keyhole to bluff the corp into thinking that that's my key to victory. 
and then I'll just hammer HQ because once my full rig comes out they're going to be very reluctant to drop an agenda into a remote server unless they know 100% that uh, they can protect it in that server so what that means is they're going to get flooded with agendas in their hand because Jackson's now gone so they're going to want to hold them in their hand as long as possible before making any moves and at that point that's when you run HQ and your chances of finding an agenda are going to be huge um, I'm not necessarily talking specific to my deck and I, I see what you're saying um, I'm not trying to be that guy that just goes against everything that you say I do agree with you but I just think not specific to my deck necessarily but specific to my style of play I like to I like to bluff my intentions so put down a card like uh, keyhole or put down a card like medium get some counters on it and then the corpse gonna commit everything to protecting R&D from deep runs thinking that that's your primary focus when you know it's not and like you said talking specific to my deck the reason why I do that sometimes is because looking at my deck yes I have keyhole which we just discussed um, so if keyhole drops I'm making money because I have cards like daily cast out giving me money over time I'm still clicking Katie Jones every turn I have my liberated accounts etc so I'm making money I'm forcing you to res cards over R&D which means HQ archives and your remotes aren't as well protected and so I wait until I see that opening and that's when I'll pop a vamp a card that I never used to like so I'll pop a vamp make a run on HQ if successful successful instead of accessing cards you may pay X credits to force the corpse to lose up to X credits then take a tag so I'll bluff R&D all day make you waste money make you spend your resources you'll be sitting at around 11 or 12 credits I'll be sitting at 30 I will spend gladly spend 12 to drop you to zero and keep my money and then continue from there so I, I like to find ways to keep HQ open or I'll vamp early make you protect HQ and then keyhole or just focus on remotes I mean this game gives you a lot of options and it's all about trying to manipulate your opponent into doing what you want them to do. Oh yeah, no problem, no problem. That's understandable. I did uh, record yesterday the deck build for the wizard deck that I'm using. This one here. Um, also, at the bottom of the channel now, I made it so you can click on the card images. And it'll bring you to the Netrunner DB slash card game DB for the Game of Thrones to see the the deck list that I used because last night a couple people were asking to see them.